Hello, welcome to Kingdom Touchdowns Coaching and Ministries. My name is Prophet Sherry Downs, Coach Sherry Downs, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining, thank you for liking. As you come in, go ahead and say hello and let me know where you are watching from. Prayerfully, you all had an awesome Thanksgiving. You enjoyed your family, your friends, those that you were able to take part in fellowship while eating. Um, we know that a lot of states are back in uh, shutdown mode, but I pray that you were able to take the most out of the opportunity. Good morning, Brother Alvin. Thank you for joining. Hi, Chaz. Thank you for joining. Listen, guys, go ahead and share this broadcast. I believe, no, I'm not going to say I believe. I know that today's word and encouragement is going to bless you. So go ahead and share. And as you come in, say hello and let me know that you are on here live. So welcome to all the live viewers and welcome to those that will watch the replay. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you are inspired. I pray that you are prospering in everything that God has called you to do. So welcome our author, Philip. Thank you for joining, Philip. God bless you. God bless you. And I pray that your books will reach the hearts of those that God has intended. And I pray the blessings of the Lord upon you, Philip. God bless you guys. As you come in, go ahead and share. It is okay to share to your platform. Today, we are going to just encourage you. Hi, Tanya. Mwah. God bless you. We're just going to encourage you in the Lord and push you to the next place of purpose and destiny. So as you come in, I want to encourage you and inspire you that when you do something, you will succeed. When you journey with God and when you partner with God and when you choose to do something, go ahead and type that in the comments. I am a doer. You have to become a doer in order to reap the benefits and see change manifest in your life. So I want to encourage you with that today. So go ahead and share. We're giving Facebook just a minute to get the word out that we are live so Facebook can build an audience. So go ahead and share to your platform. Hi, uh, Chanel. Thanks for uh, joining in. God bless you, girl. Love you. Miss you. So listen, while I was before the Lord and I was just, you know, meditating before the Lord and allowing him just to speak to my heart and just to give me a word to encourage his people on today. And um, I had intended on talking about something else. I had put a blog out there. For those of you that are not uh, subscribed to my website, you want to go ahead and subscribe because I also push out encouragement and content through the blog that I uh, post weekly. We do a weekly blog so you can go ahead and connect with that as well. So listen, as um, I, I had intended on speaking and sharing something else today, but the Holy Spirit just wanted me to encourage you guys that when you do something, you're going to see the manifestation. You're going to see the will of God. You're going to see the plans of God in your life. And you just can't sit there and watch your situation just die. You can't sit there and not begin to partner with God for your life to see the prophetic word, to see the written word of God, to see the plans and the purposes of God manifest in your life. It is in the doing that you see the manifestation. Hi, mom. Thanks for joining, mom. Uh, so you see the manifestation of what God has spoken concerning you. Listen, if you've got a prophetic word over your life, the prophetic word is just not going to manifest out of osmosis. You are going to have to partner with that word. Go ahead and type in the uh, comments, I am a partner. So we partner with the Holy Spirit and we partner with God so that the kingdom of God can manifest through us. We want God's rule, we want God's reign, and we want God's government not only to be spoken over us, but that it manifests 
through us. And how does that manifest through us? It manifests through partnership. When you choose to partner with God, you begin to see the manifestation of his will and his purpose in your life. It's not just enough. God bless you, apostle. It's not just enough to see, um, to receive prophecies and to uh, receive good things spoken over your life. But after those things are spoken, the prophetic word reveals the heart of God and the plans and purposes of God concerning you, concerning your life, your business, your children, your ministry, your finances, the plans and purposes of the Lord concerning you. So when you receive the prophecy, you're going to have to wage war for that prophecy to manifest because the enemy is not going to allow you just to walk in that prophecy. He's net, not just going to allow you to walk through that open door. He's just not going to allow you to walk through through into the promises of God, to the promised land that God has for you. So you're going to have to learn how to wage war. And one of the ways that we wage war is through partnership. Type in the comments, get it in your spirit. I am a partner. And when you are a partner of God, you move with the guidance the strategy, the leading of Holy Spirit. He is the one that leads you to victory. He leads you to triumph through Christ Jesus. How do we triumph through Christ Jesus? A lot of people quote that scripture and they say, you know, all things work together for the good, of them who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. And they'll say through Christ Jesus, we always triumph. But in order to triumph, it's going to have to take your obedience. The only way to triumph through Christ Jesus is to become a master of obedience. Jesus, I already done said enough. I could get off here right now. Through Christ Jesus, you triumph because you learn how to master obedience. Type in the comments, I am a master of obedience. I am a master of obedience, meaning I know how to obey God. I know how to submit my will to the will of the Father. The Lord is trying to mature the body of Christ. He's trying to mature us and cause us to walk into a higher realm of obedience and understanding because the days are getting darker. So the sons and daughters of God have have to manifest themselves in the earth realm through what? Obedience. It is when we obey the dictates of the spirit that we will begin to see the manifestation of the word of God, of the promises of God, the purpose of God for your life, your the lives of your children. It is through your obedience that you're going to see breakthrough. The only way that you're going to see breakthrough is through obedience. Prophecy is not going to bring breakthrough. It may bring strategy. It may bring encouragement encouragement, edification, and comfort, but obedience is going to bring the breakthrough. How is obedience going to bring the breakthrough? Because now that I have the prophecy, I can put into practice what God is saying. It's not just enough to receive the prophecy. You're going to have to put legs to the prophecy. Prophetic words is a series of steps. We look at the life of Joseph and Joseph received a prophetic dream. And in this prophetic dream, he was given the insight into the end of a thing. He was not privy to see all of the steps that he would take in order to get to that dream where his father, his mothers, and all of his brothers begin to bow to him. Type in the comments, I gotta see it manifest. And when you're believing God for change, when you're believing God for the manifestation of anything that he has spoken in your life of change, you're going to have to go through a series of steps to follow God. So I want to point out um, 2 Kings 7 and 1, 
I want to read 2 Kings 7th chapter. Go ahead and share this, guys. And as you come in, let me know where you are watching from. All right, so let's read. 2 Kings 7 and 3. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here while we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Armenians and surrender if they spare us not and we live. If they kill us, then we die. So at dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Armenians. When they reached the edge of the camp, listen, no one was there for the Lord had caused the Arminians to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army so that they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men, listen here, who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents, listen, and ate and drank. Then they took silver gold and clothes and went off and hid themselves. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. So I want to stop right there, but I want to point out concerning these lepers, leprosy, the, the leprous, the men who had leprosy, I want to point out their condition and in their state, where they were at, they were sitting outside of the city. And according to the text, they were sitting there and they were in a place of famine. They were in place of death, right? They were facing certain death and they had to make a decision. They had to do something or they would die in the state that they were in. And that's what I want to pull out of this text, how the men began to assess where they were and they began to decide, they began to document their circumstance. They began to say, look, we are in a dire situation. There may be something on the other side of us moving forward, but we have to assess where we are and see if this place we're in is conducive. And we already came to the decision that if we stay right here, we're good as dead. But if we go on into the camp, there may be a chance that we have survival there. There may be a chance that there's substance there. There may be a chance that if we move forward and we go on that we'll live if we stay here we'll die but if we move forward in faith believing that something is on the other side they could not allow fear to grip them to stay where they were type in the comments i gotta move from here so the men came to the decision that they had to move from here.
here. They had to move from the place of being halt between two opinions. The opinion of staying in the same place or the opinion of moving forward, even in the face of fear. They said, look, but if we go into the city, we might die. The army might be there and they might destroy us. But look at the condition of these men. These men were not just any kind of men. They were men that were lepers. They were already ostracized. They were already kicked out of community. They were already deemed a curse because to have leprosy was in that time incurable. So you had to go through a series of steps even when you entered into community, even when you went shopping, even when you went somewhere, you had to ring a bell and ultimately earn your dysfunction. You had to ring that bell and cry out, I'm a leper, I'm a leper, I'm a leper, because you're, the leprosy dis figured you. So it was not only something personal that was going on on the inside, but everybody knew that they were leprous. Everybody knew that they had something on them that they could not get rid of. Something on them that when they were uh, pure or even cured, they had to then go show themselves to the priest so that they can be restored back to community, so that they can be deemed Pure and holy and and pure and no longer do you have a curse on you. Leprosy disfigured you. And anytime there was a disfigurement, it was deemed that God had cursed you. This happened to you and you look different from us and we don't want to be connected with you because we don't want to catch what you got. So they had to basically wear that dysfunction. They had to own that shame. They had to own being ostracized. So if they went into the city, they could have been killed for breaking that rule, for breaking that protocol, for breaking that religious stance. If they went into the city, they may have died because the army was there. So here God was setting them up for victory. I want to tell you that when you are halted between death and life, when you are halted between the promises manifesting and staying in the same mindset of death and destruction, you're going to have to do something. Type in the comments, I am a doer. You're going to have to do something to change your circumstance. You cannot allow what you've experienced. You cannot allow shame. You cannot allow embarrassment. You cannot allow disappointment and depression to keep you isolated in your circumstance. You cannot allow the circumstances to dictate to you the victory. When you have a word from God, when when you have the truth concerning your life, it is in the power of that truth that you begin to do something. We become not only hearers of the word, but now we are doers of the word. And it is the power of God that gives us the power to become. He gives us the power to become his sons and daughters. And you know, a son and a daughter is different from a child. In the scriptures, they reference children often. But when the scriptures are speaking about maturity, now you are a son. It is obedient and maturity that enacts your sonship. Sonship doesn't happen when you won't move. Sonship doesn't happen when you stay in the boat. Sonship doesn't happen when you refuse to change. God is always changing us. Listen, listen, Linda, listen. If you have the same mindset from 10 years ago, if you have the same thought processes from 10 years ago, if you are not evolving and changing and walking into greater truth, you're going to have to assess your situation and ask yourself some serious questions. Am I willing to change? God and the gospel of Christ is all about change. It's all about 
transformation. It's all about the truth setting itself up in your life in one act of freedom after another. God begins to dismantle mind processes that fight against the word of God, that fight against truth. So I am a doer. I'm a doer of the word. I don't just sit in my circumstance and allow myself to die, but I document Come on, I document, I decide, I dictate, and I do. Write those down in the comments. Document, decide, dictate, and I do. Document, decide, dictate, and I do. What am I documenting? I'm writing the vision and I'm making it plain that they who read it may run with it and not faint. Habakkuk 2 and 2, I'm journaling with God. I'm writing down the promises of God. I'm asking God for vision and I'm writing that vision down. I'm journaling with God and I'm contrasting the two situations. What will happen if I don't move? What will happen if I don't change? What will happen if I don't step into my next with God? I'm writing down the pros and the cons. I'm documenting and putting it in writing and solidifying the vision. I'm solidifying what I'm believing God for. So if you're believing God for anything, you're going to have to begin to document your promises. If you're believing God for anything, you may have to document your faith. This is the vision and my faith says that I am healed. So you begin to document that and say, I am healed. And you begin to war with that vision. You war with that promise until you see it manifest, until it happens, until it is walked out. I see it prophetically. Now what I see has to line up with manifestation and I will not relent and I will not back down until I can cross this out and say, God did it. So I'm documenting with God so that I do not forget what God has spoken so that I do not forget what the vision is so that I do not forget my target and where I'm headed and why I'm believing. So I'm documenting things with God. I'm writing it and making it plain so that not only those that read it so that I can read it and have vision so that I can read it and know where I'm pressing toward. The Bible says to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So when I'm pressing toward that mark, I need to be able to document a mark. I need to be able to document where I'm going. I need to understand where the finish line is. I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The ultimate prize is heaven. But while I'm working, while I'm moving in the earth realm, why, uh, while I'm a son and a daughter, I am tracking my track record with God. So in faith, prophetically, or when you're reading the word of God and the promises of God, if there's a, uh, a, 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 a problem that has a, a, um, manifested in your life, you're going to say, what scripture, what word, what in the Bible is attached? What promise is attached to this problem? And then I began to look at the promises and I began to uh, attach a promise in the written word of God or a prophetic promise to that problem. My problem may be financial ruin, bankruptcy. What promise in the word of God? What prophetic promise that God has given me can I attach to that problem? Whatever your situation looks like, you have to sit before God and begin to document. All right, so now after we document, we're gonna have to decide, right? These leprous men, they had to make a decision. They had to decide. Joshua 24 and 15 tells us to choose. Choose ye this day whom you'll serve. Will it be God or will it be man? We have to choose. We have to make a decision who we're going to serve. Ultimately, the voice that we follow is the voice that we serve. 
So if you're following disappointment, if you're always disappointment and you stay in disappointment, you are serving disappointment. That is the voice that you serve. If you serve depression, if you are serving that spirit and you're not serving the will of God and walking after the will of God, whatever spirit is dictating to you, that is the spirit that you serve. So you want to begin to decide who you will serve. When I choose God and say, I am going to decide to go forward and not stay in this situation and die, I am making a conscious decision in my mind. I'm willing to renew my mind by the promises in the word of God that I may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the decision is a mental exercise and process. So I may have to sit with myself. I can't have others dictate to me um, in order to decide. I have to sit with God and make a conscious decision that I want better, that I want to do better, that I want to be around better, that I want to spend money better, that I want to deal with my children better, that I want to be a better wife. I'm going to have to decide these things, that I want to use my mouth better, that I want to think better, that I want to speak better, that I want to be a good steward over my resources, finances, relationship. You're going to have to decide this. Can't nobody decide it for you. This is something that you are going to have to choose for yourself. So after you decide after you decide, you're going to have to dictate, type in the comments, document, decide, dictate, and do. So I'm going to have to dictate to myself, right? I'm going to have to begin to confess those things. I'm going to have to begin to uh, uh, bring affirmations and dictate in my life, dictation in my life. So let's look at the word dictate. Dictate is Lay down authoritatively, say or read aloud an order or principle that must be obeyed. So now I got to dictate in my own life. I'm going to have to authoritatively lay down the rules in order to succeed, in order to go forward. These lepers, they were dictating to themselves, we're not going to stay here. We're going to get up and we're going to cause movement to happen in our lives so that we succeed. They wanted to be successful. They wanted to enact the will of God. They wanted to live. So they had to begin to dictate. We are not going to stay here. Our bodies are going to get up and move towards victory. We're not going to allow this situation to take us out. Yes, the circumstances may look grim. Yes, we may be in a famine, but if we move forward, type in the comments, I'm moving forward. If I move forward, there's change on the other side. If I move forward, there's victory on the other side. If I do something, I'll see the victory on the other end. If I don't do anything, I'm going to sit in this situation, in this circumstance, and it's going to overtake me and I'll just be done with. So, they begin to dictate. They begin to authoritatively lay down the rules. You're going to have to lay down some ground rules and boundaries in your life. You're going to have to lay down boundaries for success. You're going to have to lay down boundaries for victory. You're going to have to lay down boundaries for friendships and relationships in order to see the victory. Listen, the boundary may be, I'm not going to allow anybody in my space that talks negatively. I'm not going going to allow anything to go through my eye gate, my ear gate, and my mouth gate, and my heart gate that will contaminate where I'm going. If it's negative, I have to cut it off in order to see the victory. And that's authori uh, authoritatively taking the uh, authority and the initiative to see what you want manifested in your life to come to pass. It's not just enough to have all of these dreams in your heart and not have a mechanism or a, a series of authoritative 
principles and order in order to see the manifest. So if God told you to um, that you're going to be a businesswoman, then there has to be authoritatively steps and principles put in your life in order that you succeed. If you have a business, there's a certain caliber of connections that you need. If you're going to have a business, there's resources that you need to tap into. If you're going to have a business, there's a certain mindset that you're going to have to have. You can't be frivolous with your money. You're going to have to know how to store up. You're going to have to know how to be a good steward. You're going to have to know expenses and budget. So you began to dictate those steps in your life so that you are on the winning side. When you reach that place where the Arminians are, when you reach that place where the provision is, when you reach that place where the gold is, when you reach that place of victory, you'll be able to maintain it because while I've been dictating, I've been preparing myself for the victory. Not only is my mind prepared to uh, steward it well and to maintain it, but my heart is also. So in the dictating to yourself, you're able to uh, come out on the other side and your victory is sustainable. So do becoming a doer. James 1, 22 and 25 become a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Now the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about doing, right? When we come to Jesus, when we come to righteousness, when we are adopted into the body of Christ, we have a series of doing. If thou shalt do what? Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, right? With the mouth man believeth unto righteousness and with the with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So I'm doing something to enter in to the body of Christ. But it just doesn't stop there. He renews our mind through the word of God. And he empowers us to obey. He empowers us to do his will. He empowers us to see breakthrough. He empowers us to see our lives change and the lives of our children. But it is the doing that gives you the power. The more you obey, the more you walk in obedience and doing the word of God, the easier it, it, it becomes to obey. The easier it becomes to walk after the Holy Spirit, you know, because he is the guider and the revealer of all truth and as he reveals and as he guides we become to we uh become submissive to his leading and his guiding so i must be willing to change in order to do the will of god in order to see change i must be willing to change if i'm hard, if I don't want to change, if I'm saying this is how I've always done it, if I'm saying this is how I always spend my money, if this is how, if, if I'm saying this is how I've always dealt with people, this is how I'm going to be, and it's negative, and it's not positive, listen, there is always room to turn up the volume. So when you are in this uh, doing. And when you are doing something different, you're going to have to be willing to change. You're going to have to be willing to break ties from fear, break ties from rejection, break ties from feeling abandoned. And you're going to have to trust God for where you're going. Listen, trusting God is not a cakewalk because you are trusting uh, what you cannot see. It is a faith walk, right? One foot in front of the other that you are trusting and believing where God is taking you. And listen, when you are believing God, fear of man has to be broken off of you because the Bible says that the fear of man is a snare, right? So if I'm fearing what people think because I'm connecting with this person or because I'm choosing uh, this way or because God told me to uh, buy a building and God told me to do this and God told me to marry this one and God told me to sow into here and God told me to join this ministry. God told me to do this and God told me to do that. God told me to walk 
walk in forgiveness. God told me that he was going to heal me. And if God said it, you're going to have to believe it regardless of who supports you, regardless of how it looks, regardless of what people think or what people say. You're going to have to become a doer. A doer does not allow the constraints of what's around them to stop them. A doer keeps moving in the spite of, in spite of obstacles. A doer begins to ask for strategy. A doer begins to uh, walk out the strategies of heaven so that they see the manifested breakthrough and victory in their lives. Breakthrough, listen, breakthrough is all about strategy. Getting the strategy from heaven in order to see the change. Breakthrough happens. Listen, you want to see breakthrough? Begin to pray and ask God what to do. Sometimes our healings are coming in a lifestyle change. But it requires documenting, deciding, dictating, and doing. So if you're somebody that deals with sickness, okay, why am I sick? I need to start documenting. Okay, when I eat dairy, this happens to me. When I eat meat, this happens to me. So I may be somebody that just can't eat everything. Strategy just doesn't happen out of osmosis, like God is just going to heal you, right? No, he's going to give you a strategy in order to change your lifestyle so that you are healed, so that what you are eating and putting in your body does not kill you. So it may be in disciplining yourself. Right? In order to see that strategy. So if God gave you a business, God is just not going to allow it to happen out of osmosis. I told you guys already, you are a partner with Holy Spirit. So when you are a partner, you participate. You take part in the breakthrough. You take part in seeing the will of God manifest in your marriage, in your children, in your life, in your business, in your finances. You partner. Okay, so when I'm a doer, now I'm enacting the strategy from heaven. Breakthrough is just not about God coming in and boof, it's all gone. No, breakthrough is when I receive the strategy from heaven, I then adjust my life to what Holy Spirit is saying. If Holy Spirit, I was listening, I was at um, TBN and I was listening to Joyce Meyer speak and she was saying how... Um, somebody who was a dear friend of hers ended up dying. But for years, listen to me, Holy Spirit was telling her, don't put a certain ingredient in her food. Don't put a certain ingredient in her food for years. And this person ended up suffering because they would not stop putting that ingredient in their food. But towards the end of her life, she began to put it into practice. But by this time, it was late, too late because a lot of damage on her body had been done because she did not obey the strategy for breakthrough. Listen, if God is telling you to go vegan to see your healing, if God is telling you to stop eating sweets to see your body transform, if God is telling you to go work out, you have to begin to obey God because in the breakthrough is not going to happen out of osmosis. It's going to be a partnership. It's going to follow. You're going to have to follow Holy Spirit. So I just want to encourage you guys today to become a doer, become a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Not just a hearer only. You have the greater one inside you. The revealer of all things. He can tell you what's wrong with your body. But it is because we are undisciplined. Jesus. And because we are lazy believers. And we don't know how to walk in self-control. So if Holy Spirit is telling me that I'm sick. If my body is sick, if something's wrong and not functioning right, then I need to partner with God so that Holy Spirit can tell me how to heal my body.
So, listen, if you have not yet purchased, don't be bullied by the devil. Take authority and fight back. You can purchase that on Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. If you have not pre-ordered my newest manuscript, Keys to Unprecedented Praying Power. Listen, this book, I'm, I'm just so excited to get it out. Of, out and um, it's in print and publication. And you should have that by what? the end of December, latest January, um, in your hands, pre-order it, your keys to unprecedented praying power. You can find that at www.touchdownscoaching.com. If this live bless you and you want to push the kingdom through what we are doing on Kingdom Touchdowns broadcast, you can, um, again, sow a seed to PayPal, or dollar sign for purpose coach. Yes. You look, we look for God to do this magic wand, and that's lazy Christianity. That's lazy Christianity. That's laziness. Um, but when we begin to partner with God, He'll give us strategy for success. He'll give us strategy for the breakthrough. He'll give us strategy on how to partner with him to see victory and change. Listen, hear me. He'll even give you strategy on how to change the atmosphere in your home, change your children around, how to speak over them and build them up, how to speak the will of God over their lives, how to begin to decree and declare in the word of God, how to process the promises in your life so you know where to apply them right? God will begin to give you that strategy, but it's lazy Christianity. We want people to prophesy us there. We want others to pray us there. And guess what? Yes, you can be empowered and God will answer the prayers of others, but it's nothing like being able to go to God and go to bat for yourself. It's nothing like being able to empty your own heart before God, but lazy Christianity says, I don't want to pray because it'll cost me something. I want you to pray and I want to go to heaven off of your prayers. And it's just not going to bring victory. You may have a spurt here and a spurt there of, you know, victory because somebody decreed it. But sustainable victory only happens through partnership. And that's what God wants to bring the body into a place of maturity, maturity. Yes. It's not too late to see turnaround in your children. It's not too late. Yes. You may have done it wrong, but God is a restorer and a redeemer. Do not let the enemy tell you that it's not too late. It's too late to turn, turn your life around. It's too late to see the hand of God because you made mistakes. Don't believe that lie. God is a restorer. Listen, he says, I will restore the years. If you keep praying, if you keep fasting, if you keep putting those strategies in place, if you keep bringing your heart to God for healing, he is faithful. He is faithful. He'll begin to tell you and give you strategy on how to speak to your husband, how to speak to your wife, how to speak to your children, how to pray and how to stop the hand of the enemy, how to close demonic doors. He will give you strategy. Type in the comments, I need strategy. He'll give you strategy on how to heal your body. But guess what? We don't want to change. It is only in the changing that you're going to see the turnaround. Listen, listen. If your grandmother died of sickness and disease, if your mother died of sickness and disease, if your mother is sick, if your cousin is sick, if sickness runs in your family, then you're going to have to document this stuff. And you're going to say, God, how can I decide to see different? How can I begin to dictate in my own life to do what you have given me to do and put the strategy in place in order to see the victory. 
I need strategy. I need strategy on how to win my marriage. I need strategy on how to see victory in my finances. I need strategy on how to succeed. I need strategy on how to build. God will begin to download and impart strategy in your life so that you can see things shift. It's not enough just to be a believer and you are experiencing devastation and no real sustainable breakthrough. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to succeed just as much as you want to succeed. But the thing is, will you break off the status quo and choose to move with God, when you choose to do it God's way, guess what? You're going to upset some people. Some people aren't going to understand. Some people are going to think that you're crazy. Some people are going to think that you're over the top. When you choose God's way, listen, because it's a way that's not common. It's an uncommon way because it's not culturally dictated. It's not church defined. It's not church defined. It's not going to come from uh, society. It's not going to come from normal strategy. It's going to be a way that looks different. This is why we walk by faith and not sight. You're going to have to choose to get up from there. Get up from anxiety. Get up from depression. Get up from hurt. Get up from rejection. And move with God even with tears in your eyes. God is not a tyrant. He understands. But as you choose him... Little by little, you may be healed. Some of you may be healed instantaneously, but some of you, little by little, you're going to see the turnaround. Little by little, you're going to see the breakthrough. Little by little, you're going to see your business change. Little by little, you're going to see everything that God has spoken concerning your life. It's just going to start manifesting. And guess what? The promises of God also involves others. So I'm going to have to pray for those that God has assigned to bless me. I'm going to have to intercede for those that hold the key to my home. Those that hold the key to my loans. Those that hold the key to my resources. Those that hold the key to my ministry opening up. I'm going to have to pray for the doorkeepers. That's a strategy. Listen, when you become a doer, procrastination has to die. When you become a doer, self-sabotage has to die. When you become a doer, fear of man has to be broken off of you. When you become a doer, you are going to have to be willing to change. Listen, doership Is that even where I think I just made that up? Doership requires a willingness to be uncomfortable. In the meantime, I'm uncomfortable. Look, you know, for those of us that have had babies, you know that there's a process that your body goes through in order to see that baby come to fruition, manifest, right? Physical form, where we all can see it. So my body's gonna go through a process of preparing for birth. It's gonna be stretched. I'm gonna feel cramps. I'm gonna feel uh, uncomfortable. I'm gonna feel a stretching. I'm gonna feel a tugging. I'm gonna feel, people are gonna see my stretch. People are going to see my stretch marks. I'm not going to be able to hide the stretching. Right? When I'm a doer, I just become stretched. Because now I'm putting strategies in place so that victory will come. So I'm pregnant with purpose. I'm pregnant with the promise. I'm pregnant pregnant with the victory. So the victory is going to come through where? Through me. 
So I'm stretching my faith. I'm stretching my trust. I'm stretching my mindset. I'm stretching my prayer time. I'm stretching my worship time. I'm stretching my ability to believe. Okay. All right. Listen, if you're interested in coaching and mentoring, I do have a huddle where we coach and mentor. Um, you can sign up and register for coaching and mentoring at www.touchdownscoaching.com. We connect on Tuesday nights, 8 Central, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we pray Saturday mornings at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. I am a certified life coach with Life Coach Institute, and this is what God has called me to do. So we are moving in the purposes and the plans of the Lord. If you um, were blessed by what we are doing, you can certainly sow a seed to uh, Zelle or Cash App if you are blessed. Yes, I did. I did receive that. Thank you. I just saw that notification. I did receive that. Thank you. Um, if you are um, interested in coaching and mentoring, if you are interested in sowing seed to what we are doing in the kingdom, God is on the move and we are moving with him in submission. Listen, you're going to have to believe God. Type in the comments, I believe God. God, I believe him for the transformation. I believe him for the empowerment. I believe him that he's going to fulfill his word and his promises towards me. What I need to do is partner. So listen, if there are any people around me that are speaking negative, I got to cut them off. I can only surround myself with those that are speaking destiny dialect. Look, you know when you're around somebody of another language, right? And these people are, you know, you know, when you go to the nail shop, you know, if you're around somebody that's speaking another language, it's like, you like, uh, are y'all, are they talking about me? I, I don't know what's going on. I, uh, I don't know what's happening in here. Like, I'm so out of the loop. I don't, I don't understand this conversation, but. That's how it is when you're around people that don't speak destiny, that don't speak purpose, that don't speak kingdom. You, you should be in unfamiliar territory, right? Because I don't understand what y'all talking about. I don't understand why y'all having this whole conversation because it doesn't pertain to me. Listen, do you speak destiny? Because if you don't speak destiny, you know, I don't understand that language. I don't understand it. Because I'm all about fulfilling destiny. Because when I fulfill destiny, business lines up. When I fulfill destiny, resources follow. When I fulfill destiny, I become everything that God has ordained for me to be. Not something or somebody that people dictate. Right? I begin to see open doors. I begin to see opportunities. I begin to see God. I begin to have strategy on, for success. God wants you to succeed and he wants to restore unto you that which the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, bad mistakes, uh, ignorance, right? Because some things we suffer because we just don't know, right? We're, we're ignorant of that. We don't see another way. And God wants to restore that to you. He is a redeemer and a restorer. And listen, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. If you have not pre-ordered yet keys to unprecedented praying power, you want to do that on my website. If God has touched you to partner with Kingdom Touchdowns Ministries, uh, obey God. Um, listen, if God is um, tugging at your heart to join our mentorship, do that. Um, we're on the move, and I believe God for everything that he has spoken. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me, okay, I'm going to say, okay, okay, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get off here, right? I've never been a person that worked out, right? I've never been a person that works out. I've never been a person that works out. And, you know, I wanted my body to look a certain way because, not because I'm obsessed or anything. I just like to feel good, right? When I look good, I feel good. When I'm not heavy, because my, my weight has fluctuated even since I was a child. And like, 
being active and all of that stuff, it just wasn't taught to me, right? It wasn't something that we did in my house. It just wasn't something that I did, right? I wasn't even encouraged to do sports or anything like that. No shade to anybody. It just didn't happen for me. So um, I began to go on my journey of working out and just seeing change in my body. And I'm like, you know what? If I want my body to look a certain way, I got to dictate to myself. I got to decide that this is what I want, right? Because when I decide this is what I want, I'm willing to put it all in there to get it and ma to happen and manifest. I'm willing to not eat bread and be held accountable, you know, though I do give myself leeway, but I'm just not consuming bread and, you know, just a whole bunch of things. So in when quarantine happened, I think the break of um, the spring, when spring started to really peak and I live in Illinois, so our winters are cold here, right outside Chicago. So, um, Holy Spirit told me to, cause I was walking, I would walk. Um, but Holy Spirit told me to go walk and I put on my shoes and I obeyed Holy Spirit, right? I became a doer of what I wanted to see. That, that was in my heart, but Holy Spirit knows the bigger picture, right? He knows what the enemy will try to do in your life to stop you or hinder you or to keep you subservient to sickness, disease. So in my obedience, there could have been something down the line that my obedience, thank you for that seed, God bless you, that my obedience to God would have turned things around. Hear me prophetically. When you obey the voice of Holy Spirit, thank you for that seed. And it is through that obedience that God will begin to turn your life around and you'll begin to see change. But it keep, you have to gonna have to keep deciding every day. You're gonna have to decide to connect with people that are saying destiny. You're gonna have to connect with people that are saying destiny truth. You're going to have to connect with individuals that are going where you want to go, that will reignite fires in your life, that will have a prophetic uh, edge that can see in the realm of the spirit. Those that are spiritual, you're going to have to connect with kingdom in order to see the will of God and the plans of God manifested in your life. God doesn't want you to stay a child. He wants you to go on to maturity, not laying again foundations of repentance to dead works. He wants you to mature in him that you are obeying right away and all the way. Only way that you are going to become a doer of God's word and to see maturity. Okay. You want to see maturity. I want to mature in God in that I'm willing to lay down my way of thinking and go into a realm of, of the secret place with God. This is in my book, right? Keys to unprecedented praying power. When I'm in the secret place of the most high God and I abide under the shadow of the almighty, the secret place is not a place that is revealed to everybody. The secret place, you cannot get into the secret place void of having access. God gives you access to the secret place. And the secret place is more than just prayer. It is communion and fellowship. Because in the secret place, I learn to abide. I'm learning to be sustainable in that place place. I'm learning to find my, 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 uh, um, refuge underneath his wings. Listen. And the scripture says this, I will abide under the shadow. Listen here, Linda, listen. When I'm abiding under the shadow of the almighty, I'm abiding under a place that is so close to God that I'm in his shadow. Have you ever played with your shadow when you were a child or have you ever taken a walk in the sunlight and you've noticed your shadow? When somebody is trailing your shadow, they are right on your heels. And when I'm so close to God, Jesus, I have access 
says to all that is around him. And the Bible declares that there are angels on assignment. There are angels crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. Right? There are angels that are in his presence and surrounded in his presence. So when I'm that close to God, I have protection. I have assistance. I have joy. Scripture also lets us know that in your presence. <laughs> so when I abide in the secret place, I have access to joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not moved by circumstance. I'm not moved. This is where Apostle Paul could declare this in whatsoever state I'm in. There I've learned to be content. I'm not moved by my circumstance because my spirit is abiding. Ah, thank you, Lord, for maturing us. Listen, I'm going to get off here and go about my day. I love you guys. I pray that your Thanksgiving was wonderful. I pray. Listen, I'm not going to keep getting on here and talking about COVID-19 because I believe that that is dealt with and it is under the blood. I believe that God is, is, is orchestrating and you know, that's, you know, we're just going to move on from that. We can keep talking about COVID-19 and keep highlighting, uh, the circumstances and where we are and what God is saying and what God is doing. We can keep highlighting that and magnifying that, or we can move on to maturity and be prepared. This is what God is doing. He's preparing a body. He's preparing those that have a heart to serve him. He's preparing those that want to be submissive to the next. Type in the comments, I'm ready for next. After this, I'm not dwelling on where we are now. I'm not going to mumble and complain, mumble and complain about not being able to enjoy Thanksgiving like I used to. No, I, where I'm at, what's going on, I'm content. He's maturing. I hope you shared this because this was good. This was good to me. And, um... I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm ready for the next. I'm ready for what's next. I'm ready for the manifestation of the promise and the purpose of God. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm no longer staying in that same place. I'm no longer staying in a place of confusion. I'm not staying in a place of lack of producing. Listen, I am fruitful. I am multiplying. I am subduing. I have territory. I have new ground. I have new understanding. I have new joy. I have new hope. I trust God. My faith is stable. My mind is stable. My mind is being renewed through the word of God. I am victorious. I'm not a loser. I'm not a doubter. I believe the word of truth. I stand firm on my conviction. God is for me and he's fighting on my behalf. God is ever moving and working. I'm changing the way that I talk. I'm changing the way that I walk. You got to begin to dictate, dictate in order to do, listen, do something. That's my challenge to you. Do something different. Do something out of the norm. What well, Holy Spirit has been speaking to your heart to change, begin to change one day at a time. Don't try to be a super saint one day at a time. If God is telling you to go work out, if God is telling you to stop eating something, if God is telling you to start saving resources, if God is telling you something, do it. Do it. Because that's the strategy. Following the leading of Holy Spirit. If you want to see change in your children, begin to call them what God says they are. Who God says they are. Thank you, God, that my son is righteous. Thank you, God, that you are changing his heart. Thank you, God, that his heart is pliable to the word. Thank you, God, that you are breaking up stony ground. Begin to decree those things that be not as though they were. Thank you, Father, that you are reconciling because of the work, redemptive work of Jesus Christ. My marriage is repaired. My children are repaired. My mind is renewed. And get around an environment that cultivates that. Because when you are believing God to change circumstances, sometimes you're going to need a hedge around you that will keep championing, keep championing, that will keep cheering you on. The Bible says, now we are compassed with a great cloud of witnesses, right? These witnesses are people of faith. 
that are already in heaven, that have walked their faith walk. They are in heaven interceding and cheering you on, Jamie. They are saying, go, Jamie, go. Keep moving, Jamie. You got it, Jamie. You can do it, Jamie. Turn it around, Jamie. See God, Jamie. See the new Jamie. Come higher, Jamie. These great cloud of witnesses, they've already gone before you. They've already fought a faith walk. They've already believed God. They've already walked through circumstances. And guess what? They are witnesses to the faith walk. So in earth, in the earth realm, begin to ask God, surround me with people of like mindedness. Surround me with people of faith. That's why I created the huddle. God told me now that you are mature, now that you are a daughter and no longer a child, now that you are walking in your purpose and your destiny, I want you to raise up daughters. I want you to raise up sons that will obey me, that will move from being a child and being immature and on milk for 15, 20 years. Listen, you don't, you've been in the church for 30 years and still experiencing God the same way. That's not God. He wants you to mature in him. That's maturity. Spiritually mature. No longer a babe. Now I, I need to have greater encounters. Now I need to stand on my own two feet. Now I need, I can't keep saying, well, I'm believing God for this. And you know, no, now my belief for things is bigger because I've obeyed God to see breakthrough on that last level. So now I'm moving in a posture of obedience and greater maturity. He wants to mature you, woman of God, man of God. He wants to bring you into greater obedience. Obedience, 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 obedience. Yes, I'm grateful for those that have connected with the huddle. Uh, this is my assignment and I love it. I love what we do on our mentoring and our coaching. Thank you guys that connect and um, I, I'm, I'm so excited about what, we see manifesting and how God is orchestrating and bringing you all up higher. And that is my mandate. And I move in that mandate with God. So listen, I've been on here too long. I, I just want to see the people of God blessed. Listen, okay, let, let me, do you guys have any questions? I could take a couple of questions. If you guys want me to answer some questions, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll answer some questions. Anybody got any questions while we're on here? Thank you for sharing Kingdom Touchdowns broadcast. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. I appreciate those shares. And thank you for your seed and pushing the kingdom. Amen. Questions were answered. God bless you. Amen. All right, well, no other questions. Nobody got any questions. I was gonna dialogue. Only silly question is an unasked one. That's right. No questions? I'm going to get off here. God bless you guys. Thank you for sharing this to your timeline and your networks. 
I appreciate that. Thank you for those that watched the replay and started a watch party. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bless you. Thank you for joining. Awesome. God bless you, Jamie. Um, thank you guys for joining and thank you for watching um, Kingdom Touchdowns broadcast live on Facebook. God bless you all oh, and welcome to all of those that are new and welcome to um, those that watch on um, YouTube. On time and needed. Awesome. So thank you. And listen, now you guys will put into place all of those things that the Lord has been saying to you so that you can see the victory and the breakthrough because it only comes in the doing. I love you guys. Be blessed.